If like me you've built up your stash of distress inks and oxides but now you're wondering what on earth do you do with the picket fence, the lovely bright white. This video is going to run you through six different ways to use your picket fence ink but if you don't have the distress range you can also use these techniques for other white inks that are on the market. I'm sure some of these will surprise you, some you may have seen before and let me know in the comments which is your favourite. So my first technique is going to be ombre ink blending. Now you all know I'm a huge fan of ink blending, particularly with Distress Oxides. And as the Picket Fence Distress Ink is basically the same makeup as an oxide, so it has both a dye and pigment in it, it does work the same and they combine beautifully. So if you want to create an ombre background but you're not really up for going for all the different colours, picking different shades, maybe you don't have a huge range of Distress Oxide colours to choose from at the moment but you want to get that nice look of different colours going through different shades you can use Picket Fence and you can use this with absolutely any Distress Oxide colour that you have to hand. So I'm just going to start filling this panel with my solid pink colour, I'm going for Picked Raspberry, it's just an example, they all work the same. Now with my colour dig, with my pink ink, I can try blending this and fading it out to white or to nothing. Um, but you know what, it's not that easy. It takes a lot of time, a lot of work, a really good clean blending brush as well. So instead I'm going to come in and of course I'm working on white cardstock. This wouldn't work on any other colour cardstock. And I'm going to blend my picket fence into the other end of my picked raspberry, my pink. Here. So loading up a brush and I usually have a big brush for my picket fence because I tend to be usually covering really large areas and I'm going to first of all just start filling a small area above my colour with the picket fence just to start giving that a nice base to work into. You won't see this but it's there, it's sitting, those pigments are sitting on top of the cardstock and then I'm gradually going to start working that down into the picked raspberry and straight away you should be able to see we are blurring that line, that blend line between the two. Now with all my ink blending, my ombres, my backgrounds, I always go back and forth between the two colours that I'm blending. So I'm now going to take my picked raspberry with what's left on my brush and you can see that pigment ink is starting to pick up, the white pigment is starting to pick up on the brush. That's a good thing, that's going to help us blend in. And I'm just going to work back and forth along these lines to give us the beautiful pale pink then fading into the white. As always a little spritz of water and we have got a really pretty blend going from the darker colour up to the white and fading into the rest of your card. Now you can also do the same on the other end with a different colour and fade that into white to have white as the middleman as such if you wanted to as well. This is going to look stunning if you want to do something like a snowy background for your Christmas cards. Probably the way that I most commonly use my Distress Ink is for highlighting areas on an embossed image. So I've got an embossing folder here. This is from my Textures Floral Folk Art Collection. I will link this down in the description below for you. And whilst it's still in the folder, so I haven't peeled it back off of that embossing folder at the moment, I leave it in there, hold it still if you need to, and just drag my ink pad down over the image. Now I usually like to do this both vertically and horizontally to make sure I capture all the details. If you, if you do take this out of the embossing folder first, you'll find that you might actually sort of compress some of the embossed image as you're pressing down with your ink pad. But look how stunning that is at highlighting that design. It's absolutely beautiful. It's actually giving more of the effect of a 3D folder now. Coming back now to using white Distress Ink with your oxides, these mix beautifully. Now, if you've not seen this particular technique before, check out my channel and there's a new playlist where I'm actually mixing Distress Oxides to give you new colours in the same way we're going to do here to lighten these shades. So if you've got darker Distress Oxides and you just need them a touch lighter, just a couple of shades lighter, of course we might not always have every single Distress Oxides colour available. Um, you know, it's a big collection, it takes a little while to build up if we're going to. So there's, uh, for example, Seedless Preserves, just pop down there a solid colour, I'm going to wipe my mat 
and then over the top I'm going to layer picket fence so look how this completely changes the colour So just for comparison, this is the darker version in a similar way to uh, how we just did blending out into complete white. You can also blend from dark solid distress oxide into the lighter version very easily here too. So there's the two shades side by side. You've got seedless preserves there as a solid colour mixed with the picket fence on the end for the lighter shade. Now let's have a look and see what that's like with another dark colour. So for this one I'm going with Lucky Clover, it's a really lovely bright green. I'm going to continue down this strip a little bit so you can see the solid colour against the lightened shade. There again are the two shades when you add the picket fence to the end. It just takes that little bit of deepness, darkness, vividness out of the colour. Ideal if you do want to create a little bit of a vignette or maybe just blend into eventually into white or a lighter shade. White Distress Ink also adds a fantastic 3D effect to your stenciling too. So let's just tack this stencil down with a little bit of low tack tape. And I'm going to go through the stencil with my picket fence first. You can layer up your Distress Ink as well if you want to, just give it a few seconds to dry and then put another coat on if you want deeper colour. So I've got my white butterflies there and what I'm going to do now is just move my stencil a few millimetres one way. I tend to like to have these white highlights on the top and the left, so I'm going to move my stencil down ever so slightly by the bottom and the right and then stick that down again and I'm going to come in now with a brown. Now if you're working on different colour cardstocks you can use different colour inks on top but I like to use this brown so I'm just going to go over the whole stencil again all over the white that you've just done and the effect looks really really cool if you can get a colour that's really quite similar to your cardstock maybe just a little bit darker. And when you lift your stencil off you've got the highlights on there and the darker sections as well. It looks so cool, it looks like it's three dimensional and it's just from a flat stencil. Now if you've got a busy patterned paper and you want to say stamp a sentiment in the middle of this, it's really going to get lost between all those colours. So you can tone this down and give it a little bit of a nice base to work on using Distress Ink in Picket Fence. So I'm going to pick up some white ink and I'm going to start blending this directly into my paper. Now straight away you can see we get this fading effect. So I'm just softening the edges there with my blending brush and I've layered a few layers over the top of each other, letting each one dry before I put the next one on and that's really muted down the pattern in the centre here. Now as I said at the beginning, Distress Ink is a hybrid between a dye and a pigment, so the pigment sits on top, the dye soaks in. This is the same makeup as Distress Oxides and from what I understand this is where the inspiration for Oxides actually came from when Mr Holtz was developing this white ink and wanted the pigment, the white, to really stand out. So there's a sentiment stamped onto the patterned paper without any of the Distress Ink, the picket fence underneath. And that's how it looks with that picket fence, just toning down those colours underneath and making it really stand out so much better. I really love to create my own backgrounds with the bokeh technique and this is great if you just need something that's quite blurry, not too heavily patterned. And the picket fence ink just really picks out those circles nicely. Now I like to sometimes use a circular dauber for this and as you can see you're just adding those lighter shades, lighter circles in front of your blended background. How perfect is that? So there's loads of ideas for using your Distress Ink in Picket Fence, but these ideas can also be used for most other white inks out there. Let me know in the comments which one of these is your favourite, and also let everyone else in the comments know if you have any other fantastic techniques that you use your white ink for. If you enjoy this video, I'd love it if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And on my channel, you'll find more videos like this, and I think you'll particularly like this one just here. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again very soon.